Hi, welcome you for the session which is discussing about the maximum flow in the network. The iterative improvement algorithms are used to build an optimal solution by iterative refinement of feasible initial solution for the given complete problem. So here we will initialize with some solution that is called initial feasible solution. Then we will up apply uh, many iterations to improve that solution uh, until getting the optimal solution. The maximum flow problem is used to find the feasible flow from the single source to single uh, destination. Another technical word is sync which is allowing the maximum flow between the source and destination which can be uh, solved by using generalized method and uh, Ford Fulkerson method. Here uh, the network can be uh, explained in the form of a graph that is called a flow network which is having set of vertices and edges. Uh, it can be represented by using a directed graph where each edge is uh, drawing between the vertices u and v which is belonging to the set of edges that means we will have the set of edges like this so here the edges will be uh, drawn between the vertices u and v. The edges should have non-negative value that is called capacity between them u and v. It can be represented c of u comma v always greater than or equal to 0. Here 0 is represented whenever there is no edge between two vertices u and v. For example, uh, there is the uh, edge between uh, s and here for example it is a. S and A we are having the edge its capacity is represented by using 16 For, but here there is no direct edge between S and B so here the capacity between the C of S comma B ca uh, can be represented by using 0 that's what given here if there is no edge between the vertices uh, U and V then we can represent that uh, capacity of U comma V is 0 and uh, here the source is represented by using uh, a small s and sync can be represented by using small t. Uh, both are two distinct vertices. There should not be a source and destination same vertices. Okay. So here uh, the flow is pulling from the source and also uh, push the flow into the sink. That means here we will start the flow then we have to pull from the uh, source then uh, we have to push that flow towards the sink. So that's what we are saying the uh, flow from the source and sink. Here the flow can be computed by using the graph uh, with a uh, real valued function which is represented capital R. The function is V multiplied with V. That means vertices multiplied with vertices uh, implies R which should be satisfied the following properties. First one is the capacity constraint. That means whenever we are having the vertex uh, vertices in the graph and we will have the edge between u comma v. So here the all the vertices are belonging to the capacity I mean our set of vertices here we will have like this uh, v1, v2 etc vn then we can compute the flow between the two vertices u comma v that is always less than or equal to capacity of the vertices u and v. So suppose if I have the 16 here then my flow should be less than or equal to this capacity 16. Then next uh, constraint is skew symmetry for all vertices u comma v belongs to f of u comma v equal to minus f of u comma v that means suppose if you are having the uh, capacity here uh, 16 then you assume that our flow is 8 then uh, in the opposite direction it will be represented by using minus 8 
okay so the flow is represented by using f of u comma v equal to minus f of u comma v with respect to skew symmetry then flow conservation here we can be we can be com computed uh, for all the vertices uh, given in the graph except s comma t that means here uh, you see we are having the s and t the flow can be computed flow consumption can be computed except this source and vertices so we cannot uh, compute because there is no outgoing edge from the uh, destination and also there is no incoming uh, flow into the source so we cannot uh, con uh, calculate the consumption of the flow bit flow in the source and uh, destination t except those two vertices we can calculate the flow of uh, to all the vertices for example here you see 16 is incoming flow here uh, one more flow is 4 then totally uh, 20 is the incoming flow then outgoing is here uh, allowing flow okay which is allowed 12 units here 10 units so allowed flow is here 22 units so based upon this we can calculate the flow conservation for all the vertices except uh, source and destination so that's what given here the consumption of the flow is calculated the summation of edges uh, that means capacity uh, value incoming to the particular vertex v right equal to the edge value which is outgoing from this particular vertex vertex so that's what given here so flow of that particular vertex summation of incoming flow of that particular vertex equal to summation of the flow which is outgoing from that particular vertex that should be uh, uh, equal or less than that one okay so based upon that we can uh, draw the uh, graph by using flow values here the capacity is represented uh, here by, uh, by, by using the values quantity then the flow is represented here so this can be represented flow slash capacity okay so here the quantity of f of u comma v is called net flow from any vertex u to any vertex v the value of your flow which is defined as the uh, mod f that is cardinality of f equal to summation of the flow which is between the uh, uh, s comma v any vertex from the source to vert uh, vertex so here v is called uh, the uh, any vertex from the set of vertices for example s comma v right suppose if you take this one a then here the flow is represented by using two units the maximum capacity is here two so that's what we are representing here for any vertex and total flow can be calculated by using uh, the um, maximizing the flow uh, equation here the uh, to maximize the flow from source to sink we have to follow that three properties one is the um, uh, capacity constraint and another one is skew symmetry and a third one is flow conservation based upon that we can calculate the uh, possible paths from the uh, source to sink by using less number of edges all right if uh, the edge count is large in the flow network then it is not easy to calculate the uh, flow values so we have to use residual graphs to calculate the large number of edges available in the given graph in this uh, flow network here uh, this is allowing uh, four units of uh, quant four units of quantity from the source to sink for here uh, s2 suppose if you take this is a and uh, then uh, this one is b uh, c d here uh, the capacity is represented like this and flow is represented uh, in in front of the slash so here the s2a which is allowing two units out of the capacity three units and a to b here flow is allowing two units out of the capacity two units then uh, here uh, b2t which is allowing two units out of the three units 
capacity. So, uh, when you are taking the S2C, here the capacity is 2 units uh, and flow is also allowing 2 units. But here C2A, this area, capacity is 3 units but we are not passing any flow uh, 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 here uh, to the uh, to, uh, A from the C. So, we are representing that is as a 0. Like that, in this uh, direction, we are not passing any quantity out of the capacity is one quantity. C to D here capacity is two units and we are not, we are passing two units out of the two units. So, here D to T we are passing uh, two units of the flow out of the capacity two units. But here uh, D to B uh, we are having the capacity three units but we did not use this path so we did not pass any value, any quantity of the uh, flow. So we are making that as a zero. So totally when you are checking this from the source to sink here uh, two units we are passing here also two units we are passing flow. Like that uh, uh, here uh, to the sink we are receiving two units here we are receiving two units so maximum in this path we are passing two units of the flow plus then in this path we are passing two units of flow so totally we got uh, four units as here flow for this given uh, network thanks for watching